of all the joints and woodworking, the lonely dowel rod gets the least amount of aesthetic respect. Its cousin, the Almighty Dovetail, has long been considered one of the gold standards of fine woodworking. Even the less glamorous box joint in recent years seems to have had a surge in popularity with the internet and woodworking videos. But not much seems to have changed for the lowly dowel. Chances are, you probably don't even know a dowel exists in a piece of furniture as it's most oftentimes hidden by their woodworking creators. Today, we're going to lift the dowel from the dust and see if we can add a little flair. We're going to boldly take Mr. Dowel where dowels have never been taken before. To rocket our dowel to start them, we're going to create a two-in-one jig. The split dowel will primarily be created from the table saw, whereas the double dowel will work more closely with the drill press. From the start, we'll create a sled, like any other table sled. We'll glue runners onto a rectangular sheet of plywood that's just big enough for both of our miter slots. We'll find the dirtiest cinder block we can find and use it to weigh the entire thing down as it dries. For safety and ease of use, we'll build a couple handles for the sled. By combining them together, we can easily cut and shape them before we split them apart and sand them down on the sander. We could have bought handles from the store, but our new handles are stronger and give us much better leverage. For the dowels on our sled, we'll now want to make a cradle. I'll admit, I'm not the first to grab a feather board for anything I do, but cutting 45 degree angles can cause the wood to lift up on the table due to the increased thickness of the wood. If you'd like to see how I built this feather board, I'll have a link in the description below. After I cut the angle board in half, I used masking tape to glue both sides of the cradle together. This really is an excellent method if you don't own angled miter clamps. Due to the fact that we'll be ripping this jig down the middle, we'll need to attach a fence to the front. This fence will also later be used for the double dowel clamps, so it's important that it's straight and 90 degrees from the sled base. A couple of brads and I let it dry. Because I'm going to apply screws, I didn't want the handles to move around on me. I used hot glue to hold it in place to make it easier. I had a helper raise the blade through the back of the jig while I held the sled in place. This is probably the safest way to do this, anything else could be very dangerous. This first cut is important because it'll help us line up the cradle. The idea here is to clamp the dowel in the crook of this 90 degree cradle. We'll need a relief for our clamp to slide into which I've marked here. We'll also want a flat surface for our clamp to rest on. Because I need a flat surface to anchor my clamp, I use my spline jig. If you haven't seen my pegboard spline jig, I'll have that in the description below. It's cheap and easy and has free instructions to make one. Next we'll cut out our relief on the bandsaw, careful only to cut through the one side. I suggest sanding and cleaning any rough edges or corners off when you're done, it just makes clamping easier. Let me demonstrate how this will work now. Dowel goes in, clamp slides in place, lock it down nice and tight. I'd imagine if this clamp weren't enough, a little bit of sandpaper would definitely keep it from moving. And what's nice about this cradle is how versatile it is. Like a one size fits all. This is the most difficult part of our split dowels. 
You'll want the cradle to sit perfectly in the path of the blade. A sixteenth of an inch one way or the other will make it look off, so you really want to spend the time centering it on both the front and the back of the mitered cradle. I use a little hot glue to hold it in place by lifting it up. You can probably just add it next to the side, which will make it easier, so long as you're careful. This is just a little bit of measuring that I did to get things centered just right. There's probably a better way, but it worked for me. Of course, I didn't mention this earlier, but due to the screws I was using, I used the Forzner bit as a countersink. The measurement I'm showing here is the length from the table saw table to about an eighth inch less than the gap we made with the spline jig for the clamp. We obviously don't want to cut into that so we'll place a mark on the side and be sure to check the blade to the mark before use. It's important to note that the runner that sits in the miter slot was also added to the formula since it'll sit on top of the table when we check it. Now we'll make our full cut. Honestly, both jigs could sit separately from the other. Because most of the space in our shops is prime real estate, I figured I'd combine them together. This jig that we'll add will not interfere with the other part of the jig, but will help us find the dead center of the dowels we'll be using. I found the center and then partitioned it off into three sections, an inch apart from each other. These are essentially the three sizes I'll be making. This next section took me some time to figure out as I wanted to insert screws that would fit dead center. As you noticed earlier, my spade bits are rusty and haven't been used in years, but due to the spike on the head, which is much longer than the Forzner bits, it creates a channel for a screw to enter into, and because it's longer, it centers it much better. You'll just want to make sure that it barely exits the bottom, leaving a nice, tiny hole for a screw to enter through. It's also important to note that because I didn't want to cut too much out of the bottom due to the channel I made, I used a Forzner bit to create a shallow cut which I think is much better than using a countersink bit and removing a lot of that channel. I inserted my screws and paid as much attention as I could to making sure they were straight which really was easy due to the spade bits. I tested each hole to make sure the screws were straight. I mixed some 5 minute epoxy and applied it around the point and the inside walls. Honestly, it wasn't something I did on purpose, but it really strengthened the walls to have the epoxy on it. Just make sure you clean it out as much as you can. When that had hardened, I turned the plate around and did the back as well. When it cured completely, I used my belt sander to clean the bottom and to grind off any excess part of the metal away. I glued it on and clamped it down. Now we'll make the clamp that will make it easier to drill out the centers. Double dowels is really a misnomer here. All we're looking to do is drill out enough of the dowel so that we can add a different center. We are by no means hollowing out the full length of a dowel. Like our center finder we just made, we'll want to have accompanying shafts for each dowel to fit into. Now we'll cut the block in half of the bandsaw. I attached one half of the block onto the front of my table saw sled, making sure that the larger dowel size is closest to the edge, where more pressure will be needed to drill. Using a half inch drill bit, I lined up the half inch hole we drilled earlier to it. This makes sure that the wood block we add will be as straight as we can make it to the jig. With the other half, I decided to make it a bit beefier, giving strength and mass to the clamp. 
All wood used here is hard maple and will take the little bit of abuse we deal out. I added a few grains of salt here as friction to prevent the wood from sliding around during the drying stage. It turns out most of my wood prefers sodium in their glue ups. Who knew? Once both were dry, I added a little bit of carpet tape between the clamp faces and marked halfway up the clamp, sectioned it into fourths between each of the columns we drilled out. We'll use 3 inch 1032 bolts and knurled nuts to tighten the clamp down. Before heading to the press, we'll add a couple C clamps to keep things from moving around. Due to the length of the bolts, I had to remove my left handle, which really made me glad I never used glue. I removed the outer clamp face before adding the screws and then reattached the handle. To keep the bolts from spinning around when tightening the knobs, I used epoxy on the back half of the screws, allowing gravity to pull the mixture down, covering the entire screws. I pushed them in and allowed them to cure. Back at the drill press, I enlarged the previous holes to make sliding of the jaw a little bit easier. When all was drilled and the epoxy was cured, the project was done. Now due to time, I'll give you a few instructions on how this works and you can see a little bit of the project I made with these dowels. If you want to see more of the project, like how I made the walnut dowels and drilling out the dowel joints, I'll have a separate link at the end, as well as in the description for a separate video. It'll be an unlisted video, but you can always find my playlist and watch projects I haven't made public by going to my homepage. To cut the split dowels, it's very easy. All you have to do is load in a dowel, apply a clamp, and run the dowel jig forward, cutting into the dowel. If you find the dowel is moving, you can always add sandpaper. And this is the final product. There are so many different future ideas I have in terms of designs for this, but I really like how it looks on my project, like a flat head screw. To make the double dowels, we'll insert the dowel in the right sized hole, pressing down to make a slight indentation. Next, we'll use a brad point drill bit to carve out the shape of the point. This will make it easier to center the dowel. After that, we'll insert it into the clamp, tighten it up, and make sure we have the bottom of our clamp supported. Drilling is simple as we only need to go down deep enough to add about a quarter inch dowel into the space. I will admit that it takes a little bit of skill to get this down right, but I really like the overall look. Thank you for watching. Show our dowel friend that he can be just as appealing as his cousins by hitting the thumbs up. Leave me a comment and tell me what you think of this. Subscribe if you haven't already and stick around for the video link that will take you to the full build of this box. And remember to keep making things.